Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys about a statement I saw Greg Knuckles make a while back. Uh, I may not always agree with everything Greg says. In fact, I disagree with a hell of a lot of stuff Greg says. But I thought it was an interesting point. And he had said that if you want to build a power building program, meaning you want to focus upon hypertrophy, but you still want to get very, very strong, and I would argue you can't separate the two, right? Everyone knows that. The data is pretty overwhelming. You can't separate the two. There's, there's no real difference. There is, but it's, it's, it's more nuanced than people realize. But if you want to maximize the two, look, take whatever hypertrophy or bodybuilding program that you were going to do and start with a really heavy single. Start with a really heavy single. And then do your, your hypertrophy program. You know, power building program right there. Now, some people would laugh and say, well, how can that work? Well, that's essentially what large amounts of powerlifting is even based on, isn't it? Look at, look at stuff like uh, conjugate method. Look at the max effort days. Now, we could argue rightfully that the dynamic effort days play an enormous role in the success of the system. But the max effort days do matter. And if you look at the way the guys who run it really run it, they hit a max, and then they do a lot of times large amounts of training volume afterwards. It works very effectively. It works very effectively. And we've seen other people do systems over the years that run off this very, very similar concept. You guys recall, we've seen Paul Carter point out that if you really want to get the best muscle activation sometimes on your volume training, you can come and do a really heavy single and he doesn't even say it has to be a max. I've seen Paul's, I, it could be wrong. So I've seen him say, say something like 85 or 90%. Might have been something in that range. Do a heavy single. Then back down and do your sets of 8 or 10 or whatever you're going to do. You'll get better muscle activation. Get better muscle activation. So why would that be? Well, it has to do with the fact that you've hit the upper threshold fibers. Right? You've subjected yourself to a very high degree of tension that required you to hit the maximum upper threshold muscle fibers before you even started doing any of your work. You've already basically attenuated your body to go ahead and recruit that. In fact, you've already hit a fairly fatiguing rep with all the upper threshold fibers. The same thing that would happen if you hit muscle failure. Right? Those same fibers that happen if you hit muscle failure on, say, a, a 9 or a 10 rep set. You've hit it off the front end already. You've created some fatigue in those. And you've primed the nervous system. You're probably going to get better muscle fiber recruitment, even if you're slightly weaker, because especially if you've hit a heavy weight, and that happens to me. If you've hit a heavy weight, you're going to be a little more fatigued, but the, the result is the same. Why do you do volume work? You do volume to create fatigue. Well, you've pre-fatigued the highest threshold fibers that you're going to reach when you hit failure on those big sets. You've already hit that thing. So, you get pretty good results when you got to do all your volume. But I think Greg is onto something like that. And that's what I've been experimenting with, is essentially the, the conjugate method lately where I do a one rep max in random fashion, right? I do a max lift, and then I do all my volume behind. And that volume could vary a lot. But if you were to take what my weekly system looks like, it actually ends up being pretty much a, almost a bodybuilding type program. And that's assuming I'm still going to be doing that by the time this video comes out. I might not be. Because these videos sometimes get made a month ahead of time. People forget that. But... That's what I've been doing lately. I've been experimenting with it. And I've run the conjugate method. I uh, have got really good results doing it this year. And wanted to focus upon a certain dynamic of the method. And just repeat my Monday and Tuesday over and over. Right, My Monday and Tuesday workouts have just become my, my normal training. So I'm taking the front half of the conjugate. And that's where we hit a max and then we do all of our accessory volume. But more or less, that's exactly what Greg is talking about. Not always in the exact execution, because I'm doing random exercises. But the idea is the same. 
coming in and you're hitting a max and then you're doing all your volume behind it. But if you look at what people are trying to achieve with that term, quote unquote, power building, trying to basically, and, and it's, it's silly because they're trying to combine power lifting and bodybuilding, which have nothing in common. Uh, one of them is a performing art and one of them is a test of strength. But the ideas that they're implying is that maximizing maximum strength with hypertrophy. Well, that works for the power lifter too, doesn't it? Why? Because power lifters need to maximize hypertrophy. If a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle, you have to hypertrophy all the weakest links in your big lifts. If you don't, you're not going to be maximally strong. You're going to be leaving pounds on the platform and even pounds on the table. Got to get big. Got to get big. But this system works. It does work. Um, and it's an interesting concept. But a lot of guys implement variations of it. Uh, a lot of guys implement variations of this idea. To, the, to an extreme, and I'm doing right now a fairly extreme version of it. Uh, again, guys like Jamie Lewis over who runs Chaos and Pain, his company, and I know he's expanded it. A lot of his training is based on a very similar idea. Hitting heavy, heavy singles, heavy maxes, oftentimes on fairly random exercises, and then doing large amounts of training volume behind it. High intensity, high frequency, high volume. Essentially what most people would describe as overtraining. These guys like Jamie don't necessarily believe in that. He's got his own methods for dealing with it, and, and they're reasonably effective. And I think the thing that people don't understand when you get to a system like this, they don't understand that overtraining is a chronic state. And what they also don't understand is that just because you're tired and fatigued doesn't mean you've reached overtraining. And if you mitigate your lifestyle factors, you can actually push that out a lot further. Like overtraining is not something that is easy to achieve. An overtrained state is very, very difficult to achieve. In fact, I've seen actual experts in the field say someone who lifts weights four days a week for two hours cannot overtrain. Like I've actually seen someone with a PhD in the field actually laugh at that idea and say, yes, overtraining is real. We can diagnose it. He's like, but, but it's not even possible. Like it's not, that's not realistic. It's not going to happen. Like uh, the word overtraining itself shouldn't actually even be in the vocabulary of people who lift weights for two hours, four days a week. That it's not a concern for them. It's not really actually a concern. It's a concern for real athletes. So when people hear of you you talking about doing stuff like this, it's not overtraining, guys. A, a traditional even bodybuilding program isn't as high volume as you think it is. I mean, 15, 20 sets a fluff work five days a week, you're, you're not going to overtrain with that. You're not going to reach an overtrain state with that. You might get some overuse injuries. You might get a bunch of tendonitis because you're doing stupid stuff. You're not going to get overtrained. And you're not going to get overtrained just by taking a basic hypertrophy program and adding some maxes. And the same thing we look at that, people say, oh, you can't add those maxes, it'll destroy everything. Really? Because there's experts in the field now who are studying having people hit true maxes seven days a week. And their athletes do get stronger doing that. Like in the clinical trials going on with this stuff. It's being researched. And I mean true max is not a training max, not Bulgarian light. 100%. 100%. You can max out pretty often. Now, if you program it wrong, can it be a problem? Sure. But here's what I would even suggest. If you want to do uh, kind of what I'm doing random lifts. You're not doing the same lift all the time. Wide lift variation on your maxes actually reduces most of the concerns and risks of it. It actually takes out most of the programming problems. But that's its own topic. I'm back over to the point. Greg had said that if you really wanted to construct a great power building program, Take any hypertrophy program and just do a heavy single or a max at the start of it. People to think that one through for a moment. It's an extremely workable thing. It, it's based upon real concept. It's based upon things a lot of champions already do. It's a sound concept. 
All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.